In 1924, Mies van der Rohe presented his design for a project called the Brick Country House, which was never built. There are very few images of the proposal. The main one is the ground floor plan. But as it happens, this plan was to become very influential. It's a proposal which says something new and different about space, which is clearly in the modern idiom, but which in some way is on a parallel track to what Mises' contemporary Le Corbusier was saying at the time. We don't know very much about where the building was to be sited. Is this a building which is supposed to sit in the middle of a green plain and address itself to all points, like it's in some way in control of the landscape, say for example like the Villa Savoie, or the Villa Rotunda? Or are these walls which extend into the garden intended to suggest a boundary, like the whole building is located in a rectangular wall garden? I like to think it's the second one. A rectangle is, to my mind, implied, or at least I prefer that solution. So, if we treat the entire imaginary wall garden as the house, then some of the rooms are inside and roofed, and some are outside and not roofed. The idea that interior spaces might relate so directly and so strongly to exterior spaces wasn't exactly new, but it had never before been expressed with such bold clarity. How does Mies achieve the idea that inside and outside are part of the same architectural experience? Well, by exploiting the very idea of what goes to make a wall. A wall is made up of individual bricks, which have their own integrity, if you like. When we assemble the bricks, they make a new thing, which we call a wall. The wall has its own set of internal rules, which, when followed, make something very beautiful. Walls should extend out, but not too far, and rise to an elevation, but not too high. In fact, brick is at its most effective when it's making a garden wall. In the brick country house, Mies takes this characteristic of the wall to divide a site into spaces. The spaces are not conventional rooms which can be closed off with doors. Instead, they're simply defined by the location of a wall. Where a wall stops, an overlap of spaces occurs. And this is where things become interesting. Both spaces depend on each other for their architectural identity. It's interesting to think about the genealogy of the idea for this house. The view that the space we inhabit might not just be a series of rooms, was already made apparent in the work of Frank Lloyd Wright and some of his houses of earlier in the century. In some of Wright's houses, we also see the idea that the plan moves out from the centre, like at the Ward Willets house. This is Wright's Roby house. The Roby house is also famous for its use of brick, and these bricks extend to make walls which are appealing because they follow the rule of the brick and the rule of the brick wall that we were talking about earlier. Mies was familiar with Wright's work and he wrote that he admired it. I also see a connection between the Brick Country House and some of the houses of Edwin Lutyens and Gertrude Jekyll. This is Lamb Bay on an island off Dublin. Here the internal spaces are more traditional, but they do combine with larger external spaces which are then enclosed in a wall garden. I also think there's an obvious connection to the work of some of the Stiel artists of the time. Mies was connected to this movement and he exhibited his work with them. This is the Russian dance by Theo van Doesberg of 1918. If I take this painting, turn it through 90 degrees and remove the colour, I have a plan very like the Brick Country House. We do have a sketch which shows what the Brick Country House was intended to look like. For me, the sketch is disappointing. It feels rushed and undeveloped. Even good students sometimes need a tutorial.